Hello everyone and welcome to this next quick fire revision video for index 40 investment property. Now this is kind of a smaller version, a miniature version of the much bigger standards like index 16 and 38 which dwell on similar areas. Having said that it has a fairly narrow focus and is focused on a particular line of assets. So what is an investment property? See investment property has four legs that you have to see first it has to be land or building or both no other asset no motor vehicles no aircrafts nothing land or building or both which is either owned by the entity or it is held as a right of use asset that is you have taken it as a right of use asset and hence appearing in your balance sheet third primarily held for the purpose of earning rental income or capital appreciation or both and fourth it should not be held for own use or for the purpose of sale or use in the ordinary course of business if these four criteria are in a way fulfilled, then a particular land or building or both can be classified as an investment property under index 40 and to be shown separately in the schedule 3 balance sheet. A few sticky areas where index 40 has given clarification is what if the property is currently held for an undetermined use. The property is not currently being used, but the use is undetermined. See, if at the time of initial recognition, at the time of remember initial recognition if your intention is to use this property this property is currently vacant however the intention at the time of initial recognition i will again repeat is to use this property for the purpose of your own use then it can be classified as pp if the intention is to give it out on rent you are your brokers are showing the property to potential tenants but you have not been able to finalize with the tenant your intention is to give it out on rent then it will be classified as investment property however what if we are not very sure the property is lying vacant we are not very sure the property is held for what you call as an undetermined use in which case the classification would be in the form of investment property as per index 40 this could have gone either ways and hence in order to facilitate standardization index 40 mentions that properties that is land or building which are held for an undetermined use will be classified as per, as per investment property secondly what if there are employee occupied property let us say staff quarters in which case index 40 believes that this is not primarily held for the purpose of earning rental income or capital appreciation but it is primarily for the purpose of staff welfare and as a result this will be recorded as pp and not as investment property other items like properties under construction again at the time of initial recognition for properties under construction or initially the vacant properties it depends on the intention if the intention is undetermined then you can show it as investment property okay so these are various uh, points that we need to consider next it is possible that the property can be used for dual uses like there is a four floor building out of which two floors are held for own use two floors are held for let us say giving on rent on others in which case these two floors are separately sellable from the other two floors and hence the standard says that if property is held for dual use then if these individual assets are capable of being sold separately then you can proportionately record half of this as pp half of it as investment property however if there's a single house out of which two two rooms you are using for your own use and two rooms let us say you are giving for renting it out now you cannot sell just two rooms of the house separately and hence if it is not capable of being sold separately then index 40 says that the entire asset has to be shown as pp unless the own use component is insignificant they don't define what an insignificant percentage is however from a student standpoint any part used for pp is assumed to be significant unless the question tells you otherwise which means long story short if the property is held for dual use then if that prop if a part of the property is capable of being sold separately then you can show it as an investment property separately if it is not capable of being sold separately then you will have to show the entire asset as ppe unless the own use component is considered to be insignificant Ajah, next is the core on why there is a separate index 40 the accounting now the accounting over here at the stage of initial recognition you will record it again at the stage of initial recognition you will record it at cost same as pp where the cost is the purchase price non-refundable non-credible taxes like stamp duty plus directly attributable expenses plus borrowing cost if it is a qualifying asset etc same principles of deferred payment and barter that is fair value of the assets given up first preference followed by fair value of the assets received followed by wdv of the assets given up for barters having substance and wdv of the assets given up at barters lacking substance same principles for subsequent expenditure that it 
should be capitalized if it increases life or efficiency. Otherwise, it will be expensive to the PNL. Major replacements can be added and subtract WDV of the old parts. However, the change over here, the major change over here arises in subsequent valuation in the balance sheet. As per index 16, you can measure using cost model or revaluation model. Under index 40, you have to measure using cost model only. Just as a very quick background, under IFRS, you are permitted to follow cost and fair value model both. And under the fair value model, IFRS says that you can take the underlies gains or losses to the PNL account. Now, we are not as Indian legislators very comfortable taking the underlies gain into the profit and loss account. And hence, fair value model is not permitted in India. You have to measure using the cost model only. However, it is an investment property and hence the readers are interested in knowing what the fair value is and hence the standard tells you that the fair value can be disclosed separately. The fair value can be disclosed separately. However, the fair value should not be separately, uh, the fair value should not be separately uh, used for the purpose of revaluation in the notes to accounts. You will disclose the fair value determined separately along with uh, the source from where fair value is determined, whether it is done by an independent valuer, the methods used, the assumptions used, all of that will be disclosed in notes. However, you cannot record the asset in the books using revaluation or fair value model if it is an investment property. Another common area, though it is not a difference, is should there be depreciation on investment property? Yes, if it is building. Land in any case is not depreciated. Students tend to think that if it is investment property, you don't depreciate. No, investments usually are thought to be as financial assets like bonds, shares, debentures, which don't depreciate because they don't have physical form. But buildings in the form of investment property do have a physical form and hence they should be depreciated if they have a finite life. Land in general does not get depreciated. So the core part over here is the recording at subsequent balance sheet should be done using the cost model only fair value model slash revaluation model is not permitted under index 40. Having said that, a fair value has to be determined as has to be shown separately in the notes along with the assumptions used, the sources, the methods, everything. If fair value is not determinable, separate reasons have to be given in the notes for the same. Now, if a particular item is classified as an investment property, does it continue to remain investment property up to perpetuity? Well, not necessarily. If there's an actual change in use, again, emphasis on the words actual change in use, mere intention is not sufficient. At initial recognition, you can decide to show a vacant property as investment property or PP considering the intention, but the moment it is classified, either ways, if you have to change the classification, a reclassification can happen only if there is an actual change in use. So, in 2019, you now decide, you were using a factory for your own use, you now decide that enough is enough, I don't want to continue with the production, I start looking for tenancy, it takes two years for me to find tenants and after two years in 2021, I give it out on rent. So, the actual change in use happens in the year 2021 and hence, that is when there will be a reclassification. Reclassification happens when there is an actual change in use and reclassification will happen at the carrying value. Carrying value is the value at which a particular asset appears in the ledger and not at the fair values. And hence, whether you reclassify from investment property to PP, PP to investment property, investment property to inventory, inventory to investment property, whatever, the reclassification will happen at the respective carrying values as on the date of such a reclassification. So, this is about reclassification. A recent exam question has also been asked on the same. And then lastly, a few special cases. What if there is a holding subsidiary relationship and the parent has given an, a land or building to the subsidiary on rent? Then in the SFS of the parent, it is an investment property. In the SFS of subsidiary, it is a right of use asset and the accounting depends on whether the subsidiary uses it for its own use, in which case it is ROUPP or if it is subletting it, in which case it is ROU investment property. But in the consolidated financial statements, parent and subsidiary is one and the same and hence the classification in the CFS depends on the ultimate utilization for the group as a whole. So, what does the subsidiary who is the ultimate holder of the asset, what does the subsidiary do? Well, if subsidiary is holding it for its own use, then it is PP. If subsidiary is renting it out to the others, it is investment property. And lastly, what if there is an entity which derives rental income as a part of its core business along with other substantial services like a hotel for example. It earns a rental income from room rent, however it provides substantial other services and hence in such cases the entire hotel asset will be shown as a PPE in case of the books of the hotels. So this takes care of India's 40. I hope this has been helpful to you. A quick revision. Let me know if you need any help or some other videos that you want me to cover. Till then study well. Goodbye. Take care.